Hello students, I'm Dr. Puneet Bhujani, the OG Guru and welcome to the January 2024 FMG recall session. So these are all the recall questions which all your students had sent in. Some of the options may be missing but you can always post in the comment box if some options were different or if some questions were slightly worded different. So it's all a recall session and we also can try to come back with a proper a perfect MCQ discussion session also. And I'm very very happy that if you check the hit list video, the list of prediction what I had said was absolutely 100% true and you can see some screenshots also which I have put in. So overall my assessment of the paper was that out of the uh, 30 questions like 20-25 were extremely straightforward and were very easy questions and 4 to 5 were yes tough questions but I'm happy that we have got 100% strike rate and I will show you all the screenshots also which I've actually discussed in the actual videos uh, where the questions have tough questions have come in so yes definitely three to four questions were very difficult and uh, which uh, you may have got it correct that's great and even if you have not uh, you'll learn and this session we're going to discuss not only the recall we'll also try to give you a lot of knowledge so this is not only for the students who have just given the exam even the student if you're preparing for the upcoming exam do see this video i'll be giving you some explanation in detail also okay but before i begin all of you please download the og guru app and this is the best chance that in case if you are preparing for the neat pg and you can go for six months neat pg uh, master class uh, for the uh, for the preparation and discount coupons are available and if you are not sure of clearing this time fmg don't get disheartened do subscribe to the six months uh, fmg package uh, and definitely the june july exam you'll be doing very well in obgy is my guarantee so do not forget to download the og guru app apply the discount coupon which is the launch 30 and what am i offering you in the app detailed video lectures covering all the theory all the mcqs including image based question handwritten notes you can see some of the samples i have kept over here these are very nice handwritten notes uh, and with the images integrated and mock test and of course my doubt solving and mentorship is there so please do install the og guru app and start your preparation right away in case if you haven't done it okay so with this let us begin uh, the recall mcq session and as i said that some of the options may be different this is all based on the recall so if you feel do comment in the chat box if some option was different or if some question was uh, differently worded i'll try to cover the maximum questions what all i have got from the students okay so yes the first and the difficult question a lady at 11 weeks undergoes abortion or mtp or some said that sir it was mentioned chorionic villus sampling the patient underwent at 11 weeks and she is a rh negative patient what is the dose of and TD 50 300 150 and you can see the screenshot I'm so happy that I've discussed this in my RH negative video now please attend uh, uh, please pay attention so first what is the basis so the basis is please pay attention that whenever the mother is RH negative whenever the mother is RH negative and she is married to a RH positive husband or RH uh, positive partner let's write husband over here and the mother is RH negative, then after delivery, okay, and provided the ICT is negative, okay, remember before giving NTD, the ICT should be negative. If the ICT is positive, then there is no point giving NTD. So, ITC should be negative in the RH negative. Mother, keep this in mind. Now, after birth, what is the logic of giving NTD? The logic is prevention is better than cure, and it is based on the assumption that after delivery, Okay, after delivery, we do the baby blood group. Okay, so the baby is born, that baby's blood group I can do. And after delivery, if it is a RH negative baby, then nothing required. But if it is a RH positive baby, okay, so after the delivery of a RH positive baby, I will give 300 microgram NTD injection that is after delivery okay so that is not the answer that is not the answer that is in anything beyond second trimester and after the birth of the baby okay so but the question over here is that sir whenever suppose if i do mtp or suppose there is a ectopic pregnancy then it is not possible that what MTP I do, what I suck out the products, it is not possible for me to find out the baby's blood group in that MTP. Isn't it similar the baby which was stuck in the tube in the ectopic pregnancy? It is not possible for me to find out the blood group. Or similarly, if you are doing a CVS, okay? So whenever we do the MTP, you assume 
we assume this is on the assumption that the baby is rh positive that that mtp which i did is for a rh positive so the baby is rh positive so when the mother is rh negative married to a rh positive husband or a partner and when we are doing mtp in the first trimester 50 microgram so anything to do in the first so 50 is the answer and as you can see over here i discussed this i've discussed in my actual rh negative fantastic video same thing all of you can see over here okay that sir when the mother is rh negative the husband is rh positive and ICT is negative we assume that the baby is RH positive and anything in the first trimester MTP or abortion 50 microgram first trimester ectopic pregnancy again 50 microgram and second trimester onwards the dose is 300 microgram similarly antenatal routine this is routine antenatal anti-D prophylaxis which we now give at 28 weeks this is also 300 microgram and after delivery of course after delivery of a RH positive baby after delivery so after delivery of a RH positive baby again 300 microgram okay so this is the first trimester and therefore the answer is 50 microgram hope you have got this correct this is very very important not 150 whatever may be have been the fourth option 100 whatever that's not the answer and not 300 is anything to do in the second trimester and after birth of the baby i repeat this is on the assumption that when she underwent the abortion or the mtp this mtp the baby is rh positive you assume because prevention is better than cure so in a rh negative mother any time when a mtp is done or there's a ectopic or any cvs basically anywhere we expect fetal maternal hemorrhage to take place and TD should be given. Simple rule, anything in the first trimester go for anything in the first trimester go for 50 microgram and anything second trimester onwards is 300 microgram and TD. Okay, but remember the mother should be ICT negative. So this is a very important question. Yes. Now again moving on to the next question. Please read the question correctly. We have got 22 weeks pregnant lady. Yes, sir. Now MTP Act, MTP is allowed till 24 weeks. Yes, MTP allowed. From the old, it was 20 and now the MTP is allowed till 24 weeks. But for which indication? Don't make a mistake in that. Here, it is OCP failure. So, they are talking about failure. So, very difficult MCQ. They, I think, fooled the student because all of you had prepared that sir, the upper limit from 20 is increased to 24. But this is for failure of contraception. That is the MCQ. That for failure of contraception, you can again see in the screenshot. I'm so happy this is covered in my actual classes in the contraception. So please see this. And as all of you can see, that sir, this raise of limit from 20 to 24 is for which three conditions sir if the baby has any structural anomaly or chromosomal anomaly because sometimes the structural anomaly in the baby is detected later at 21 22 weeks or the uh, or the chromosomal anomaly is detected later and therefore this limit has been raised also if it's danger to the life of the mother sexual assault victim or rape victim the patient may present was late and in such cases till 24 weeks the MTP is allowed. But most important as you can see failure of contraception is still allowed only up to 20 weeks. Okay. So please understand this that this upper limit of 20 to 24 is mainly if the fetus has got some anomaly. If the fetus has got some anomaly or if in special circumstances rape victim for failure of contraception okay please keep this in mind student and i'm so happy we had uh, taught you this the failure of contraception is still only up to 20 weeks it is like that if your condom has stone or ocp has failed why are you sitting at home then you need to come to us early okay so failure of contraception is only and the patient is 22 so no can be done by two doctors opinion no okay permission of superintendent no and medical board 
मेडिकल बोर्ड इज रिक्वायर्ड वेन आई वॉन्ट टू डू द एम टी पी इवन बियॉन्ड सपोज ट्वेंटी फोर वीक्स दैन द मेडिकल बोर्ड विल बी ऑफ Uh, will be constituting and will be saying that whether this uh, baby uh, we should terminate or not. Medical board will give the opinion. So the medical board has a pediatrician, the radiologist, the gynecologist, and they form a board. Okay, so here the answer is that yes, sir, can done if a congenital anomaly is there in the fetus. That yes, let it be failure of contraception. But now, sir, the baby at twenty two weeks, I do a anomaly scan and I find out that the baby is having anomaly and therefore i can do if anomaly in the fetus because anomaly in the fetus we are allowed up to 24 weeks is this understood for failure of contraception no can be done with two doctors opinion no okay we are coming to that because for failure of contraception it is only up to 20 weeks yes the one more change so students got confused between option a and b the new guideline says that sir now up to 20 weeks up to 20 weeks only one doctor or one rmp has to sign and beyond 20 to 24 weeks two doctors have to certify okay two doctors or two rmp have to certify but that is for these indications only okay Next, sir, fetus has an anomaly or any uh, rape or sexual assault victim. Okay, so please keep this in mind. Next, sir, chromosomal or structural anomaly not compatible with life, danger to the health of the mother, and rape these cases till twenty four weeks. So then, between twenty to twenty four, two RMP will certify. Failure of contraception is only up to twenty weeks. Very very important MCQ. I predicted also, and this very happy this has come, and I hope all of you have got it correct. So the answer here is option B, and I can only do it if a congenital anomaly is detected in the fetus. So we're going to go in detail, and it is going to be a learning session for the students who are also are going to get a benefit. Okay, we will not only be like a recall, we'll also give you a lot of extra information. okay yes the toughest mcq it was a virgin mcq p o p q classification and i'm again so happy i will covered it in my lecture okay students so even the highest level i had predicted that this questions may come in the future interestingly this question has not even come in the neat pg and now likely to be coming in the neat pg also so p o p q is a pelvic organ a uh, prolapse quantification pelvic organ prolapse quantification system you are not supposed to remember the whole system okay but we are supposed to remember that hymen is the reference point and again you can see on the this it's a stages of prolapse p o p q pelvic organ prolapse quantification and hymen is the reference point that is the only thing you need to keep in mind stage 0 no prolapse stage 1 The most distal part of the prolapse is more than one centimeter above the level of the hymen. Stage two, the distal portion of the prolapse extends from one centimeter above to one centimeter below the hymen. So everywhere the reference point is the hymen. In reference to the hymen, we are discussing. In stage three, distal point of the prolapse more than one centimeter below the hymen, but not less than two. And complete vaginal reversion. So we don't expect you to remember, but just remember. the p o p q stands for pelvic organ prolapse quantification system and hymen is the reference point in this p o p q system so this is very very important mcq and surely it will be repeated in the future also and normally the os is at the level of ischial spine okay ischial spine is station 0 the external os is at the level of ischial spine but popq system hymen is the reference point just to mark up the system is in front of you we don't expect you to remember uh, but we had taught you in the actual prolapse videos okay now again yes. so first i have discussed all the difficult mcqs okay so all the difficult mcqs i am discussing in the starting part and the easier we are going to discuss towards the end of the video okay so don't get depressed if your uh, mcqs are going wrong till now don't worry so first four five mcqs were really difficult then all the easy paper and the routine paper had started okay yes now the thing is that first of all shoulder dystocia what is the mnemonic clap if you feel happy dope d o p e so this is the risk factor or the etiology d stands for diabetes o stands for obesity 
P stands for post datism. There are two P's. Okay, post datism as well as past history. If one time shoulder dystocia, again shoulder dystocia. And E is excessive weight gain. Okay, excessive weight gain during pregnancy. That means mother puts on too much weight or even baby puts on too much weight. Excessive weight gain. So, this is the risk factor or etiology for shoulder dystocia. And what happens in shoulder dystocia is that the head has delivered out. Okay, the head has delivered out, the head has delivered out, but the shoulder gets stuck. So, shoulder is basically stuck behind the pubic symphysis. This is the pubic symphysis and the shoulder is over here. Okay, and the important part is head has already delivered out. Okay, the head has already delivered out and then the head can recoil against the perineum. So, this is the turtle sign. Okay, clap if you have learned something new. Turtle sign, again a virgin MCQ likely to be coming in the future exam. If the head delivers and head hits back against the perineum. So, this is the turtle sign. Okay, so head will recoil or hit against the perineum. Now, please understand important point in shoulder dystocia never give fundal pressure because if you give fundal pressure the condition will worsen so suprapubic pressure is the first thing what you give okay suprapubic pressure is the first thing what you give so that's already done and then we go for the mac roberts maneuver okay so the question over here is that the mac roberts maneuver has failed so it's a difficult mcq because still now we only expect the student to remember mac roberts and as you can see I have also uh, put in the uh, screenshot also. Okay, so point number one keep in mind is, keep in mind is that suprapubic pressure is already done. Suprapubic pressure is already done and Mac Roberts has also failed. Okay, because generally we give suprapubic pressure first, this is followed by Mac Roberts. What is Mac Roberts? You hyperflex. Okay, it is hip hyperflexion. Okay, it is hip hyperflexion. hip hyperflexion and abduction okay and if this is not successful then what we have to go and do is the woods maneuver okay woods maneuver so that is the answer it's a rotation woods corkscrew maneuver is the answer and uh, all of you uh, can see over here as i had written over here that sir first we try we try the never give fundal pressure, suprapubic pressure is what we give and Mac Roberts maneuver, hip hyperflexion and abduction and then we try the Woods maneuver and last is the, what is the Zavalani? If all the maneuvers fail, if all the maneuvers fail, then we are supposed to go and do LSCS. But how will I do LSCS? Because the head is already out. So, I have to reposit the head back inside the vagina and then proceed for LSCS. If all the maneuvers fail, then last is the last option, last Zavellani maneuver. Okay, so the Zavellani maneuver is the last option which is done. So if the question was that which of the maneuver will be done just before LSCS, then the answer is the Zavellani maneuver. Gaskin is all for that. You can try later on. So Woods maneuver. So remember the sequence: suprapubic pressure you give first. And the Mac Roberts, then Woods, then Rubens, you can try, Haskin, you may try, and Zavellani is the last maneuver before proceeding for LSCS. So, since this year this question has come, next year we may get a question that before proceeding for LSCS, which maneuver is to be done? Zavellani. So, Zavellani is the last maneuver to be done. Okay, the last option is Zavellani, and then I have to proceed for LSCS. So, when all maneuvers fail, do Zavellani and go for LSCS. Your Mac Roberts has failed hip hyperflexion plus abduction and suprapubic pressure is to be done the first. Okay, so we do suprapubic pressure. Suprapubic and Mac Roberts are almost done together. So suprapubic is done first and then Mac Roberts. So suprapubic Mac Roberts can be combined and remove the lithotomy position. Okay, remove the lithotomy position. Okay, so immediately remove the lithotomy position. So, I taught you the risk factors for shoulder dystocia dope, remove lithotomy, suprapubic pressure, Mac Roberts, and then Woods maneuver is the answer. Okay, moving on to the next. Yes, again, very, very happy that ovarian torsion. Okay, ovarian torsion. All of you can see this is a match the column kind of a question which I had uh, discussed. 
and you can see that sir for ovarian torsion we prefer to do a color doppler so easy mcq but just we had predicted so why because please understand this that usg or a ct scan or a mri will tell me about the ovarian mass but when it is a torsion it's acute abdomen we want to see whether the when the pedicle twist the blood supply will get compromised and therefore color doppler because whenever i want to look at the blood vessel or anything to do with the blood supply or anything to study like example lower lower leg dvt color doppler iugr color doppler ring of fire ectopic color doppler okay so color doppler will tell you that whether the flow is maintained because if this is the pedicle and this is the ovarian mass so when the pedicle will twist when the pedicle will get twisted when the when the tor when the twist will when the cyst will undergo torsion the blood supply will get occluded and the color doppler will tell me that the blood is not reaching and therefore color doppler is very important for ovarian torsion color doppler is a part of usg but usg plus color doppler okay so usg color doppler is the best answer and that's the investigation of choice for your ovarian torsion and one more mcq which cyst has got maximum risk of torsion dermoid cyst okay out of all the ovarian tumor dermoid has a maximum or the most common to undergo torsion or maximum risk of torsion okay maximum risk of torsion dermoid cyst okay so with every mcq we are discussing some very very uh, important uh, extra mcqs also okay uh, moving on to the next mcq yes so now a relatively simple papers will start yes whenever there is coughing laughing sneezing basically increase in intra abdominal pressure and there is passage of urine this is sui stress urinary incontinence what stress are we talking about not the stress of entrance exam neat pg fmg any xt exam no not that stress the stress is any increase in intra abdominal pressure so whatever may the other options we are not bothered simple mcq coughing laughing sneezing giving rise to leakage of urine which the patient is aware about that is sui and remember student that in sui the most common reason what is the most common cause for sui bladder neck descent okay bladder neck descent along with urethral hypermobility this is the reason for su in 75 to 80% patients and in 20% patient it could also because of intrinsic sphincter defect okay intrinsic sphincter defect okay so bladder neck descent plus urethral hypermobility is the main reason for the sui and any lady which is complaining of coughing laughing sneezing leakage of urine that is our sui yes again a hot topic primary amenorrhea at mcq has to has to has to come i had predicted and yes it again came now there were two questions okay one was that there is primary amenorrhea an absence of secondary sexual characters or shield shaped chest was given i think some student told me show okay shield shaped chest okay shield shaped chest or widely spaced nipple so basically it is streak ovaries yes why because there is no estrogen absent secondary sexual characters tell me that sir estrogen is not there otherwise there will be breast development so since estrogen is not there what it is yes a streak ovaries and of course this is your diagnosis turner syndrome and this is the most common cause okay turner syndrome is the most common cause for primary amenorrhea most common cause for primary amenorrhea okay and what is the karyotype yes whatever options were given 45 46 xx x i know 45 xo so 45 xo so this was two questions i think this was one question that the karyotype was asked 45 xo so i think the options were 45 xo 46 xx 46 xy so very quickly if i also tell you three causes of primary amenorrhea 
primary amenorrhea most common cause in order of frequency number 1 turner syndrome 45 xo number 2 rmkh rocketansky mayer kustner hauser rmkh or also called as mullerian agenesis this is 46 xx and the third most common cause complete androgen in mullerian this is agenesis and your androgen insensitivity syndrome or testicular feminine syndrome is 46 xy okay so one what is the karyotype that was one question and the second question was what are the additional features okay so additional feature high arch palate webbed neck okay i think this was the question students can confirm in the chat box and student can also leave a comment okay so webbed neck or a wide carrying angle So, web neck, high arch palate, wide carrying angle, shield shape, chest, widely spaced nipple and remember the most important hypoplastic uterus. It is not absent uterus, okay. Hypoplastic uterus is there, internus syndrome, okay. So, Turner syndrome. So, the diagnosis is your Turner syndrome, okay. So, the diagnosis is Turner syndrome. It is the most common cause for primary amenorrhea, 45 XO and hypoplastic uterus is there remember because the other two things they have got absent uterus yes so in turner syndrome the uterus is present and both this the uterus is absent in both rmkh and cais the uterus is absent so additional features i think web neck was there or wide carrying angle hypoplastic uterus uh, that is the answer and 45 x so very simple mcq okay yes now please understand that whenever placenta near the cervix at 20 weeks no problem so many patients when we do a scan at 16 18 20 weeks the placenta could be low lying okay but as the pregnancy grows 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 the as the uterus becomes bigger 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 the placenta gets pulled upwards so when the uterus is small yes the placenta may be low lying but as the pregnancy will advance 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 please understand it does not happen that the placenta detaches from here and walks across from the uterus and walks across like this and gets attached no but as the upper segment grows more the placenta gets pulled upwards okay so most of the time by 28 30 weeks the placenta goes upwards only so if at 20 weeks the placenta is low lying no panic yes you have to warn the patient there may be slightly bleeding spotting but you are cannot decide whether normal delivery at term i will do no and similarly directly will not decide for c-section at 38 yes we will just wait and repeat the usg at around 32 weeks okay so 30 to 32 weeks or even later at even 34 weeks we can repeat the scan and see whether the placenta has moved upwards or not if it is low line if it's a placenta previa then i would like to do delivery at 37 weeks so if they tell you that if they change the question if they change the question that sir it is placenta previa at 36 weeks scan then do cesarean at 37 weeks don't wait till 38 weeks so and again no point repeating usg at 38 it's too late isn't it she may start bleeding at 37 weeks okay if she goes in labor so placenta previa the delivery is by lscs done at 37 weeks okay in a patient of placenta previa but for that i need to confirm and do a scan of course so 38 weeks is too late simple mcq just wait and watch and repeat the usg at 32 33 34 weeks so a is the simple and the best answer okay because placenta can move upwards yes a combination of your pharmac mcq and a gynac mcq also medicine uh, and your obgy but mainly pharmac that hypertensive pregnant woman extra information asthma so please understand this that ace inhibitors absolutely contraindicated okay ace inhibitors absolutely contraindicated in pregnancy why anybody yes it can cause fetal kidney problems okay fetal renal problems can happen if given in the first trimester 
and later on also mainly what is the problem yes sir oligohydroamnios okay so fetal kidney problems oligohydroamnios iugr and even pulmonary hypoplasia so ace inhibitors are absolutely contraindicated that we need to keep in mind ace inhibitors are absolutely contraindicated now remember students labetalol i will not give labetalol is the first drug of choice but specifically when the patient has asthma labetalol will not be given because labetalol can cause it is also beta blocker and it can cause a problem in asthmatic patient the asthma can get worsen and therefore nifedipine or calcium channel blocker is safe in asthmatics so overall if it's a hypertensive lady labetalol is the first drug of choice we prefer oral labetalol iv labetalol is mainly for hypertensive crisis but not when the patient has asthma even your uh, pharmac teacher will say that sir, when the asthma labetalol will be problem so that is out and see if you see both options were labetalol so that's easy you can rule out nifedipine is the correct answer over here ace inhibitor is absolutely contraindicated okay so moving on to the next mcq screening for diabetes in pregnancy again very very important i'm so happy we had discussed this and i'm sure all of you must have got it correct so please pay attention that first of all the screening for diabetes why do we do gestational diabetes screening because pregnancy is a state of insulin resistance pregnancy is a state of insulin resistance and this when is it likely to develop gdm 24 to 28 weeks another very very important mcq so at around 24 to 28 weeks the gestational diabetes screening is recommended now please understand what is 50 gram glucose load is the o sullivan test it's we don't do this it's the o sullivan or the older one glucose challenge test okay so the o sullivan test uses 50 gram glucose 100 grams glucose load is given in GTT, glucose tolerance test, as per the ACOG guidance when we do GTT. So, remember the old criteria was that we do GCT first by 50 gram glucose. And if it's higher value, more than 140 after one hour, then I do GTT. But now, what are we supposed to follow? Yes, DIPSI guidelines, okay diabetes in pregnancy study group india dipsy okay diabetes in pregnancy diabetes in pregnancy and study group india so we have our, our own guidelines study group india and this is because india we indians have got more chance of developing diabetes so it's a universal it is said that for all pregnant patients all pregnant patients we should screen and the DIPSI guideline says that 75 gram glucose, okay, patient, preferably fasting, but even if the patient is not fasting, it's okay, 75 gram glucose is given to the patient and after 2 hours, after 2 hours, we should do her blood sugar levels and remember the golden value, it should be less than 140 milligram per dl. If it is more than 140, then the patient is considered as having GDM, okay? So, 75 gram glucose. So, that is the screening for diabetes done between 24 to 28 weeks. What routinely now followed at most of the hospitals and what we do in our private practice. Also, the DIPSI test, 75 gram glucose, okay? So, 50 gram is the O-Sullivan glucose challenge test. 100 grams is the GTT or the glucose tolerance test where a proper fasting is required and we take 4 samples in GTT fasting 1 hour, 2 hour, 3 hours and 75 gram glucose is the test for the DIPC guidelines. 75 gram glucose load is given and after 2 hours it should be less than 140. Less than 140 is normal. Okay, if it is more than 140 then it is GDM. Okay, moving on to the next MCQ. Yes, low socioeconomic status, partner is a truck driver so may have multiple sexual partners all that. Basically extra information no use screening for cervical cancer all of us know pap smear test pap smear is a screening for cervical cancer and in the traditional pap smear we do recent advances liquid 
based cytology so it's a clear in my image based questions i've also shown you the difference in the pap and the liquid based cytology something new in the liquid based cytology what we can do is the hpv testing today we can do the hpv testing and we can also do hpv genotyping that is the core test okay that is called as the core test so the testing of the pap smear uh, plus the hpv testing is called as the core test or the liquid based cytology that is a screening test for cervical cancer ca125 is a very very non specific marker and yes it may be used in ovarian cancer but as we know it is non specific because many many other conditions also ca125 is elevated like your acute pid salpingitis peritonitis even endometriosis and laparoscopy is of course too invasive screening test has to be very very simple easy so either it is we can even do visual inspection with acidic acid or visual inspection with glycogen okay that is also slight sometimes accepted but mainly it is a pap smear test and if facility available then liquid based cytology is better but a pap is a screening test for cervical cancer remember the guidelines starting from 21 years of age till the age of 65 years acog guideline says that after 65 the screening can stop provided the previous reports are not every 3 year leap up okay every 3 years the pap smear should be done 21 years to 65 years of age moving on to the next mcq yes very simple i'm sure all of you have got it correct most common organ involved in genital tuberculosis in genital tuberculosis and that is the fallopian tube okay fallopian tube and in the fallopian tube please understand remember ampullary part okay because it has got a dual blood supply the tb bacilli love oxygen and ampullary part and that also remember the infection begins in the submucosal area okay so extra information many students know only fallopian tube ampullary part is the most commonly affected and then the infection spreads to the uterus the endometrium or the uterus is the second most common organ involved okay the second most common organ involved after the fallopian tube is the endometrium and in the uterus the cornual endometrium why the cornu because the tubes open over there okay so the ampullary part is the first to get affected and then it is a direct spread and therefore the cornual endometrium is very likely to be affected so the most common organ involved in genital tuberculosis is your is your fallopian tube moving on to the next question yes now again so happy we have discussed this in our emergency contraception multiple times that unprotected intercourse on the fifth day so what is the preferred emergency contraception okay so all of us know that in the emergency contraception when the patient comes to us within 72 hours of course earlier the better unprotected intercourse or the condom ruptures or tears during intercourse or boyfriend girlfriend meet they have no plan of having sex but they end up having sex okay ho gaya okay so then what is preferred is the lng tablet single tablet 1.5 mg i'm sure all of you are aware of the brand name i pill okay i pill okay 1.5 mg so that would have been the answer if they said that the patient had come to us on the third day so within 72 hours if the patient comes then the lng pill is the most commonly preferred by the way high dose oc pills oc pills in high doses is called the usp method usp method but it is very very having lot of nausea and vomiting the patient takes patient when she takes very high dose that means four tablets together yeah, if it's a 50 microgram two tablets together and two after 12 hours or a 30 microgram pill then four tablets together and four after 12 hours so this is the usp method but that is also within 72 hours only 
okay mesoprostol has nothing to do with emergency contraception that is for mtp medical termination of pregnancy okay and yes so when the patient has come to us up to 5 days or up to 5 days up to 5 days then one is the most commonly one, the, the popular which was used very very commonly uh, till uh, recently is our IUCD which is the answer over here IUCD can be inserted and anybody very very new something which is definitely going to come in the upcoming exam something new now which is available Ulipristal yes Ulipristal acetate Ulipristal 30 milligram single dose 30 milligram stat is also the latest it is a selective progesterone receptor modulator ulipristal and that also now can be given up to five days okay so either ulipristal if it's in the option then that is also the answer but iucd is the answer over here because ulipristal was not in the option so unproved intercourse up to five days iucd okay so again as i said contraception mtp and vaginal infections were the three most hot uh, topics which were asked uh, in the exam this year uh, moving on yes now again this is a slightly tough mcq please understand this that the labor at 38 weeks 1 pm 4 centimeter dilated getting good uterine contractions and at 5 pm she has progressed to 6 centimeter now what is the further management now please understand this that this is in my labor video i have explained is a new concept okay that the old criteria was old criteria was that up to 3 centimeter is latent labor okay this is the old criteria okay and beyond that okay so then the active labor starts at 4 to 10 centimeter it is the active labor now this has been replaced this has been replaced and therefore please understand this that now up to 5 centimeter 0 to 5 centimeter is considered as the latent labor and active labor is now starting from 6 centimeter is the active labor now in active labor latent labor could last for long time active labor we know that in a primary gravida the rate of cervical dilation should be at least 1 to 1 1.2 centimeter per hour multi it could be even 2 centimeter per hour so what has happened is that 4 centimeter she was at 1 pm yes definitely but she is still 4 centimeter is considered as latent labor okay as per the new criteria or the new definition the 4 centimeter is still latent labor okay as per the acog guidelines and the modified WHO guidelines okay so latent labor and now with good contractions at now 5 pm she is already reached 6 so now she is in proper active labor so there is no need to do a immediate cesarean section of course fetal heart rate everything should be mentioned and this is not i would not consider this as a slow progress also because when she reaches 5 6 and 5 centimeters you have to see that okay so if she just tell you 5 centimeter and then 6 is now proper active labor now you see that now in the next 2 3 4 hours 6 7 8 9 the next 3 to 4 hours she should deliver uh, that is the criteria okay so either and again oxytocin definitely not required because already good contraction so since already the contractions are good oxytocin is not required so either we can allow the progress of labor if that is in the option students can tell me then we could mark that also the answer and if they tell you that sir we can do ARM yes to see how is the liker and all that and we can also reassess to see what it is but definitely we can allow progress to happen and yes ARM can be done and we can reassess the situation reassess after few hours or reassess after two hours two to four hours that is the best answer okay so ARM can be done that is artificial rupture of membranes can be done and you see allow progress labor to happen and you reassess after two to three hours okay so and if you even consider it like a older thing like this is the very very new and very very difficult 
But even if you say okay, sir, 4 centimeters, so this is what it is. Okay, answer would remain the same if you consider that yes, sir, from 4 centimeter at 1 to 5, 4 hours may she has only progressed 6. That means also if you feel that the partogram is touching the alert line, you have to be alert. And in that alert, what you do, you again reassess the situation and basically we do ARM and you see whether pelvis is adequate or not. So, ARM would anyway be done. Okay. Oxytocin would be given if the contractions were not good. So, if they say that the contractions are not strong enough, then oxytocin. Okay. Okay. So, keep in mind that 4 centimeter patient is still in latent labor as per the latest criteria and 6 centimeters is in active labor. Now, if she is primary at least 1 to 1.2 centimeter per hour multi 2 centimeter per hour dilatation so we can reassess her after 2 hours allow labor to progress ARM can be done to augment the labor and reassess the situation after 2 to 4 hours if still she is the same if after 2 to 4 hours also same then you need to check in what is the problem and then decide accordingly okay so this wouldn't be considered as a slow progress immediate c section not required Immediate C-section would be done only in case there is a fetal distress. If they have mentioned that now the baby heart rate, fetal distress is there. Or if on doing ARM there is thick meconium, you know that meconium is thick meconium, then you might want to do immediate C-section. Okay. So, of course, more information would also help. Uh, moving on to the again a uh, important MCQ in MTB. So, who gives consent? Okay. So, please understand this that the who will give the consent for MTB? husband, wife, neighbor, intern, doctor, no, not the neighbor, okay. So, point number one that always for MTP, it is the female consent, okay. But, but, but the patient is having mental retardation, that's the clue. So, as long as the patient is normal, patient is mentally sound, then only the patient, only the female consent is to be taken only female consent to be taken only patient or female consent provided the female is normal and mentally sound okay so if she can take her decision and she is mentally sound and she is normal then only her consent is required doctor will never give the consent okay doctor never gives the consent doctor will give the opinion doctor has to give an opinion whether the mtp can be done MTP required or MTP not required. But when the patient is having mental retardation, then the legal guardian would be giving the consent. Okay, so legal guardian would be giving the consent and the partner consent is not taken. Now, partner could be the legal guardian, but legal guardian is the best answer to mark. Okay, so parents are the legal guardian. So, whenever there is a mental retardation, the legal guardian is the one who will give the consent. Very, very important MCQ. Legal guardian. If this mental retardation was not there in the option, then only the patient consent, okay, would be the answer. But when there is mental retardation, who will give consent for MTP? Yes, okay. So when the female consent required, never both partners, okay. Uh, moving on to the next MCQ, yes. So supine hypotension syndrome. That whenever the mother is lying down, what is happening is that there is IVC compression, not the SVC, okay. So, inferior vena cava gets compressed and that is the reason that is your supine hypotension, okay. And that is why what we always recommend that the patient should also always sleep in the left lateral or the right lateral. Matlab in the, so, left lateral we say, but even right lateral is also okay. So, patient should always sleep on one side, okay. So, left lateral or the right lateral uh, position is when the patient should sleep on. And that improves because when the patient turns to one side, the IV compression is because the gravid uterus, okay. So, gravid uterus will compress the IVC, okay. And there is dizziness. This is the classical supine hypotension syndrome. Okay. And when the patient sleeps on one side left or right, she feels better. And also the blood supply to the baby is better. Therefore, remember in IUGR patients also we say in your wards, if you go and see that better to have a patient should take good rest in the left lateral position, the blood supply to the baby also increases. So, it's the IVC compression. No, SVC is too much up. Okay. Yes. Moving on to the next question. Yes, very, very simple. I'm sure all of you M cells criteria is for diagnosis of 
bacterial vaginosis or the gardenella infection okay so for gardenella infection or bacterial vaginosis and this is not a std it is because of imbalance and what are the amcells criteria so totally there are four criterias what are the four criterias sir grayish white discharge grayish white discharge anybody next ph more than 4.7 okay vaginal ph again we have discussed this multiple times in our mcq discussion video also and also in our actual lectures okay so grayish white discharge ph more than 4.7 presence of clue cells okay presence of clue cells that is you take a smear and put it on the microscope these are the cocobacilli vaginal epithelial cells loaded with the cocobacilli so the clue cells and last is the whiff test so both these are extremely extremely important mcq presence of whiff test positive that is you take the 10 percent koh whiff test what is used so the vaginal secretions plus 10 percent koh we get a fishy odor fishy odor on release that is because of release of amines so this is the amcells criteria for the diagnosis of bv bacterial vaginosis or gardenella infection grayish white discharge uh, ph more than 4.7 presence of clue cells and presence of whiff test positivity okay moving on to the next question again very very simple okay curdy white thick okay so either the word curdy white remember my students curdy white or what else i told you cottage cheese white okay so cheesy white cheesy white pucha bataya cheesy white or curdy white or cottage cheese white cottage cheese matla paneer so anything to do with your dairy products paneeri white milky white lassi white vanilla white paneer kurma shahi paneer butter masala okay so now whenever you're going to eat paneer you're going to remember me okay so curdy white discharge and pseudo hyphae this is our candidiasis okay pseudo hyphae and spores candidiasis infection and of course fluconazole is the drug of charge okay so candidiasis curdy white discharge pseudo hyphae i'm sure all of you have got this correct simplest mcq candidiasis is the answer and fluconazole okay and by the way just one more important bacterial vaginosis what the drug of choice metronidazole and what is the type of discharge in trichomoniasis yes greenish yellow okay so greenish yellow frothy discharge greenish yellow frothy discharge that is with your trichomoniasis okay so greenish yellow frothy discharge is trichomoniasis and also strawberry cervix is with this and yes male partner treatment is for which of the following so i told you bacterial vaginosis because of imbalance imbalance between the good and the bad bacteria so imbalance so it's an imbalance in the bacteria bacterial uh, flora So the good bacteria or the Dodderlands bacilli, Dodderlands bacilli are decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. Therefore, the Gardenella can go up. So it is not going to affect the partner for partner treatment. Not required here. The partner treatment not required. And candidiasis also, but the best answer is trichomoniasis trichomoniasis definitely you need to treat both the partners okay both the partners you need to treat single best option to mark is trichomoniasis because definitely it is a std it is a sexually transmitted and trichomoniasis and what is the drug of choice again metronidazole okay so metronidazole is the drug of choice what are the fourth option you can let me know the trichomoniasis uh, you need to treat both and which of the is needed okay if the question is in which the partner treatment not required then remember bacterial vaginosis partner treatment not required okay so metronidazole is the drug of choice and both partners we need to treat for trichomonial infection so 
moving on to the next mcq maternal part of the placenta yes so very very simple very very easy we know that it has got two parts the placenta the maternal and the fetal chorion frondosum from where the chorionic villi arise that is the fetal part that is the fetal part and what is the answer yes desidia basalis desidia basalis is from where so please understand this very very quickly what happens is that when the implantation takes place this okay so the part of the uterus the part of the uterus which contributes to the placenta that is the desidia basalis okay that is the desidia basalis and the chorionic villi or the chorion frondosum there is a part of the decidua initially which is over here this is the decidua capsularis and the rest of the wall rest of the wall there is decidua parietalis okay so this is the decidua parietalis and this is the decidua capsularis but decidua basalis forms the placenta at term four fifth of the placenta is of fetal origin so chorionic villi chorion frondosum is the fetal part and decidua basalis is the maternal part of the uh, placenta very simple uh, one liner mcq decidua parietalis is on the remaining part this part rest of the part is the decidua parietalis and here this part where the baby is now growing 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 this is the decidua capsularis both will fuse when does the fusion take place around 14 to 16 weeks the desidio capsulus and the parietalis will fuse okay very very important i'm so happy nt scan is done when okay so nt scan it is a screening test it is a screening test and nowadays we call it as a nb nt scan what is nb sir nb stands for nasal bone and NT stands for nuchal translucency. So it is the NT scan. Why? Because what happens is what are we looking at? We are looking at the nape of the neck. Okay. Again, in the uh, this also I've shown you with the images also. Okay. So this is the baby, and this is the uh, baby, and you are supposed to zoom this part. And at the nape of the neck, at the nape of the neck we look for the translucent space and this we look for the nasal bone so this is called as the nbnt scan done towards the end of the first semester 11 to 13 weeks okay and all of you know we measure the nt nt should always be less than 3 millimeters up to 3 millimeters considered normal so it should be 1.52 so up to 3 millimeter is okay nt more than 3 millimeter is a marker for down syndrome yes trisomy 21 detection okay and what happens because if the baby is having trisomy 21 then there is absent nasal bone so two things we need to remember absent nasal bone and increase in nuchal translucency okay keep in mind that 18 to 20 weeks what do we do at sir 18 to 20 weeks we do a tfa scan targeted imaging for fetal anomalies TFA scan or the malformation scan is done at 20 weeks. So, I am giving you extra information 18 to 20 weeks and 22 to 24 weeks if we want to study we do the better fetal 2D echo. Fetal 2D echo where the heart is studied more in detail specifically if the patient is having diabetes, over diabetes, elderly patient then fetal 2D echo preferred to do at 22 to 24 weeks. So, 18 to 20 weeks is the malformation scan or the anomaly scan malformation scan targeted imaging for fetal anomaly and nt scan done 11 to 13 weeks nt should always be 1.5 to 2 millimeter less than 3 millimeter nt more absent nasal bone is a marker for down syndrome and increase in mucal translucency is also the feature for trisomy 21 moving on to the next question yes cannonball mets on chest x-ray where do we get yes so snowstorm appearance on usg snowstorm appearance on usg it is for your vesicular mole and cannonball mats choriocarcinoma okay choriocarcinoma choriocarcinoma 
naked cannon ball mats on chest x-ray okay so that is a very very simple mcq i hope all of you must have got it correct cannon ball mats choriocarcinoma and then only medical okay chemotherapy okay chemotherapy is preferred is the preferred treatment of choice for patients of choriocarcinoma okay gold standard for endometrium i'm so happy you've discussed laparoscopy also so many times and endometriosis favorite topic nowadays what is the symptoms of endometriosis did what is the mnemonic at all mission dance india dance okay so did dance india dance that is your this what is did d is dysmenorrhea i is infertility and last d is dyspareunia dyspareunia matlab painful sex that is deep dyspareunia on deep penetration there is uh, pain during sexual intercourse okay so dysmenorrhea infertility dyspareunia did dance india dance that's my mnemonic for endometriosis and laparoscopy is the investigation of choice or gold standard because seeing is believing because usg can be normal usg may pick up a chocolate cyst okay but usg can be normal because in endometriosis you have to see the endometriotic implants so what we see anybody quickly yes sir we put in a telescope through the abdominal cavity and in the ab abdo in the laparoscope we see the uterus the uterosacral we will see the fallopian tubes and we will see the uh, ovaries and what else so this is normally and what do we see in patients of endometriosis yes all the fruit salad isn't it so we may get a blueberry lesion okay blueberry red raspberry purple raspberry so like that blue color lesions we will get purple color lesions all the different red raspberry purple raspberry okay so red color red flame lesions all these are the lesions including the gunshot appearance or the matchstick burn spots which are the black color spots okay we'll also get adhesions we may get okay so powder burnt appearance or matchstick burn spots powder burnt spot matchstick burnt spots and of course the famous chocolate cyst there will be a chocolate cyst also which is seen so all these are the all these are the uh, important laparoscopy finding and laparoscopy is the preferred investigation of choice and laparoscopy is not only for diagnosis simultaneous treatment also can be done with the laparoscopy yes you'll break the adhesions remove the chocolate cyst and we'll go and do the electrocoagulation or fulguration of the endometriotic implants so the implants will not be seen by usg nor ct scan yes mri may see some endometriotic implants but seeing is believing laparoscopy is the gold standard or the best for endometriosis and uh, so yeah so this is about all the questions i think we had got and i request all of you please download the og guru app and we it is going to be a super 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 preparation you can go in for the 6 months package lawn 30 is the coupon code available i'm personally guiding the students how to study mentorship is there there are super video lectures trust me when you will see the video lectures all these questions all these questions which have come in the neat pg and i can assure you even for the upcoming uh, june neat pg uh, july neat pg and even the june fmg examination all these questions which we discussed today in the recall session were discussed in my actual videos uh, and i request all of you to please go in for the 6 months or the one year pack beautiful notes are also available for all of you integrated with the diagram and we are discussing all types of theoretical concepts all mcqs the previous years mcq virgin mcq mvp mcqs and all ibqs are also there so it's a complete it's a ultimate preparation for obgy nothing more is required for you for obgy is my guarantee 
I'll cover the entire uh, theoretical aspects, separate videos for theory, separate videos for MCQ. Final MBA students will also get the benefit. And trust me, students, last 20 years, it's my record that whatever we did is almost 100% strike rate. And I can assure you that for the upcoming June FMG exam and for the July NEET PG also, that 100% strike rate record will be maintained. And you will remember me and thank me on the day of the exam is my guarantee. So please do download the OG Guru app. Use the launch 30 coupon code and you will get it at a very, very affording price. The six months package is available, even one year package is available. Notes are also downloadable, very nice handwritten format notes are there. And of course, I'm there to solve all your doubts in guidance and timetable. I'm available uh, through the chat on the app and on my personal mobile number also is given to all the students who ever enroll. Okay. And I wish you all the best. And as I said, this was a recall session. Some options may be up and down, but overall, Yes, I would say my assessment of the paper was that out of the 30 questions, 25, 26 were very, very easy and straightforward and 3 to 4 were difficult. Uh, yes, so slightly, uh, I would say tougher paper compared to the previous year's papers, uh, but still I'm sure all of you uh, would do well when you master these videos and do leave in the chat box any comment and if uh, some of the options you felt were uh, different in your paper, if you recollect some more questions, please do share with me the questions also. And we'll be happy to uh, give you answers to those MCQ also. So wishing you all the best and we'll see you in the and do subscribe to the OG Guru channel also. And please do download the app and start your preparation today itself without wasting your time. So best of luck and I'll always be available for you.